I was going to go over the conjugate root theorem, and before we begin, we're going to have to look at this slide to refresh our memory that if x equals 3 is a root of a polynomial, then x minus 3 is a linear factor. If x, minus, if x equals negative 4 is a root of a polynomial, then x plus 4 is a linear factor. If x equals 2 thirds and it's a root, then 3x minus 2 is the linear factor. The reason why is because we're working backwards. If you know x equals 3 and you want to set it equal to 0, you have x minus 3 equals 0. So therefore we have the linear factor of x minus 3. Same thing here, if you know that x equals negative 4, that means if we add 4 to both sides to make it equal 0, we have x plus 4 equals 0, and that's the linear factor of x plus 4. Here with the fraction, you have x equals 2 thirds, which means you multiply both sides by 3, so you have 3x equals 2, subtract 2 from both sides, and you have 3x minus 2 equals 0, and that's your linear factor. So this all comes into play with the conjugate root theorem, which says if a polynomial has a root of a positive square root number, then negative square root number is also a root. If a polynomial has a root of a plus square root a number, then a minus square root number is also a root. Same thing goes with the imaginary. If ai is a root, so is negative ai. If b plus ai is a root, so is b minus ai. The reason why, because when you take a square root of a number, the square root you have to take the positive and negative. So, for example, if you have something like x squared plus 1 equals 0 and you want to solve for x, we have x squared equals negative 1. x equals, again, taking the square root, you have to remember that you have to take the positive and negative side. So when you have x equals plus or minus i. So every time you have an imaginary, it comes from the square root. That's why you have to have both positive and negative appear in the root. Only when you have imaginary and square roots. So let's apply this. Using the conjugate root theorem, what are the other roots to the polynomial? If you know two of the roots are square root 2 and 1 plus i. So using the conjugate root theorem, it says if you have a square root as a root or an imaginary as a root, you have to take the conjugate of both. So we know x equals square root 2, then x also equals negative square root 2. We know that x equals 1 plus i, then we know that x equals 1 minus i. Notice I didn't change the sign of the 1. You only change the sign of either the i term or the square root, never of the constant. So our roots are square root 2, negative square root 2, 1 plus i, 1 minus i. From the conjugate root theorem, you can actually find the polynomial in standard form. So, I give you two roots. It's a cubic. Cubic means we're going to have x to the third. So, here we go. We know x equals 3 minus 2i. x equals also 3 plus 2i. That's by the conjugate root theorem. And we also know that x equals 5 halves. Now, you don't do x equals negative 5 halves because there is no imaginary and there is no square root. So now we need to go 
and find the polynomial in standard form. So we got to work backwards. So to work backwards means we got to set each and every root equal to zero. So I'm going to minus 3 plus 2i to both sides. Minus 3 plus 2i to both sides. And you get x minus 3 plus 2i equals to zero. Same thing, minus 3 minus 2i. So you get x minus 3 minus 2i equals zero. Here, we're going to multiply by 2. And you get 2x minus 5 equals 0. Which means the linear factors are x minus 3 plus 2i. x minus 3 minus 2i. And 2x minus 5. All equals 0. Next, distribute. x times x is x squared. x times negative 3 is negative 3x. And here we're going to get negative 2xi. Next, we're going to distribute the middle term, negative 3. And you get minus 3x plus 9 plus 6i. And we're going to go again and do 2i. Remember that's positive, so it's positive 2xi. And this is going to be negative 6i. And here we have negative 4i squared. So let's combine like terms. So cancels out, cancels out. So we have x squared minus 3x minus 3x plus 9 minus 4 negative 1 because we know that i squared equals negative 1. x squared minus 3x minus 3x plus 9 plus 4. Combining like terms again. So we have x squared minus 6x, 9 plus 4, plus 13. And again, we have to remember we have to do the 2x minus 5 term. Distribute again. We have 2x to the third. x squared is negative 5x squared. Do the middle term. Negative 6, positive 2 is negative 12x squared. And negative 6 is positive 30x. And the last, we have to do. 13 times 2 is positive 26x. And 13 times negative 5 is negative 65. Combine like terms. We have 2x to the third minus 17x squared plus 56x minus 65 equals 0. And there's our polynomial with the roots given above. So I'll let you look at it in full. If you want to pause it, you can and see what I did. If you want to ask questions during class, after school, before school, I would appreciate it. That is all for today's video.